If you've seen my full van tour, which is linked up above, uh, you'll know that I have a really cool refrigerator. It's a drawer, it's a, from the marine industry, it's designed to be on a boat, so it can be 30% uh, not level and still run just fine. It is an AC-DC. I would actually recommend getting just a DC only because you don't need to have your inverter on to be running your fridge if it's efficient. Problem is that this one's not keeping my food cold when it's hot out and so uh, I've decided to stop battling it and I'm going to replace it. So currently I have the Isotherm Inox Drawer 130. It is a beautiful fridge. I love how it's laid out. I love how it works. It, it's a drawer and so when you open it up, it the, the cold doesn't spill out onto the floor. It just stays in the box. But it, the freezer gets way too frosty and it ends up freezing itself shut and I can't use it anymore. And, um, and I'm just kind of tired of, um, of defrosting it. And most importantly, the fridge is not keeping up when it's warm out. The compressor is running all the time and it's not keeping the food at this at below the safe temperature. So it's built into a fixed cabinet. So I was really limited on what I could replace it with. If I didn't have the if I didn't need it to be exactly the same size, I probably would have gone with a Vitrigo, but I had to fill, I, I couldn't rebuild that cabinet because that would just mess other things up. And so um, Isotherm makes a freezer that's the same outside dimensions. It's a lot smaller inside because it has a ton of insulation. Um, now I did insulate the outside of my fridge, but not enough to make enough of a difference. I've been using a smart thermometer called a steel lobster and that goes from the the dial um, dumb uh, thermometer that that the isotherm comes with to one that actually keeps an actual temperature and it shows you what the temperature really is and lately it's been uh, up to 49 degrees at when it's 80 degrees outside so not cool <laughs> at all and certainly not cool enough so today i'm going to uh, replace it i ordered the freezer and i'm going to use the same stainless lobster to control the temperature of the freezer so that it is temper it, it's a refrigerator temperature instead of freezing all my food because that wouldn't be good either to remove the fridge you just have to take out four screws just um two on either side on the top and two on either side on the bottom. So you can see here how I have an extra layer of insulation, but it's just not enough. Okay. Now I can unplug the block, the power brick. So I'm gonna unplug the sensor and then unplug this. And the other thing I have to do is get rid of the zip ties. So I'm going to unplug these. They're live. This is part of the stainless lobster. This is the, the block. Okay, once this is unplugged, I need to remove it from inside. So, and this is the fan and the sensor. I'm actually gonna scoot it back up just a little bit so I can get in there better. The next step is to cut the zip ties off of the fan uh, slash sensor. 
one, two, and then, okay, yep, there we go. All right, so now this comes, feeds through here and then drops down here. There we go. Ready? And maybe. <laughs> So I'm in the process of prepping the cabinet. Um, I had I had a 120 up here that I don't need anymore um, because I'm not going to use it, run it off the inverter. So and it was going to interfere with the uh, the depth, and so I had to take that out. Um, so here's the here's the 12 volt wire just ready to be plugged in. I'm adding some ventilation holes on this side on the bottom so that it flows the way it's supposed to. So it's supposed to have a hole, uh, uh, holes on the bottom um, on this side going up to holes on the top on the other side. I already have these from my original builder, but we don't have any lower holes. So I'm gonna fix that with a drill. And it wanted its drill bit. So I'm starting the first hole where where the drill can reach easily. All right. There you go. Whew, two. I need to do some electrical, but we're gonna go somewhere quieter. I'm ready to install the freezer, but um, I need to do something with the cords first. So all of these are gonna get unplugged and they're gonna plug into here. Um, and then I'm going, I'm not going to use the the uh, 120, the, the AC part of it. Um, so I'm gonna take that off. And um, the DC part of it, I'm gonna use the cords from the fridge because that's already hardwired into my van. So I'll be taking these off and putting them on the fridge that I'll be selling. Um, so yeah, uh, let's, let's get it off. So um, first off, I need to cut the zip tie. Because those are all going away. So they're just really easy connectors, <laughs> I think. There we go. So just pull that one and this one. First, I'm gonna end up pulling them all, but I wanna get these off and out of the way. Wow, that one's tight. <sighs> oh, because it's attached to something else. And I'm just gonna Put that off to the side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pull all three of these all together. Maybe. But these are just tight. Okay. All right, so I am, I need to take this off of here. This just pops off just like that. So this is the DC that was already in there, um, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use what was in my van already. That is back in here. Okay, so for the block, I need to scoot this. Up. We're gonna take this little one that was attached to the D to, to the DC cord. And we're gonna attach it to the DC cord that was in the van already. Okay, and now I need the block, it fell. Um, okay, so we're gonna put the black on the top. And then the red goes next. And then this little black cord for the fan goes here. Okay. 
Okay, and then we need the communication cable from the smart controller goes here. And then before I do anything else, I need to um, I need to zip tie this into the shelf inside. Okay, so here's the inside of the freezer. It kind of looks like the inside of a file drawer, really. Um, ah, I don't know. Okay, here we go. There we go. Um, so I need to attach this inside, and I want it to be somewhere kind of out of the way. Um, and it has to go on one of the racks. Okay, so I've zip tied the stainless lobster so that the label is facing the fridge. Okay, so the other thing I want to do um, before I attach it is I want to thread it through here just to keep it out of the way. And I'm also going to pop it down the shelf. There. Okay, so that stays out of the way. <laughs> Hair everywhere. Um, Alright, now I'm going to thread it through the zip ties. Got a lot of sun going, huh? And I'm going to plug it in right here. Just a little bit more. There's plenty of cord. It's just up above the fridge. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in right here. And, and I'm going to put the shelf in the bottom position. Back so that it is so out of the way that I just don't even notice it. That will be awesome. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just string this up through that hole and get that out of the way. This is the fan that we just uh, zip tied inside. So we're going to plug that in the side. I can see that that's a bend right there. We're going to blot, we're going to get rid of all of the rest of these we don't need. That's the thermostat that we're not going to be using, the internal thermostat. And then we're just going to plug the whole block in. Wow. That is really, really in the way. Okay. There. Okay. I hear it running. That's good news. All right, and then this, the DC cords get zip tied where they, where I took off the, the others before. And I want it to be like this. Okay, I'm just gonna trim the zip tie. little tricky because these are all very tight. You want to be really careful of these corners because they are very, very sharp. They're not designed to be in contact with anybody. Okay, this is not working. If I let that go this way, I think it'll go in okay. I'm having trouble with the communication cable because it's sticking straight out. There we go. As I go, I'm I'm pushing this down to make sure that it is not getting pinched or anything. Ideally, <laughs> this will just slide in and the screws will line up and everything will, so we'll see. Okay, it's in. I'm just gonna um, put the screws back in and let it cool down. Let's go through the um, stainless lobster pages. So this page, the one with all the tiny, tiny print, is the one where you will change your um, temperature 
notch so that it runs as a fridge. So right now I have it at 34, between 34 and 38. And how you do this is you just use the left and right arrows to go to the different characters that you want to change. And so right here I can change the 34 to 35. I want it 34, so I'm going to change that back. So just the up and down arrows to change that. And then to go to the next page, the next page shows you the current temperature in the fridge. It's running a little cold right now um, at 33 degrees. Um, it's 86 degrees out. It's on standby, which means that the compressor is not running right at the moment. And right now that my battery, my house batteries are um, charging. Um, this shows the runtime. It's running 27% of the time and it is running at 23 and a half amp hours per 24 hours. And um, this is the humidity and this is a bigger display of the temperature of the fridge. Also, I want to point out that I have a piece of duct tape on the top of mine. I've just folded it over and taped it to the top. Um, because the, the display is a little bright at, when it's really dark at night, and so I just have this to cover the LED light that comes off of this. And then there's just a little um, stand that it clips into that I have next to my stove on top of the fridge. Okay, so, so far I've found three of them. I'll find the other one. So this one looks like it lines up. So one thing I'm doing to make this, or two things I'm doing to make this more useful for me, I'm taking these front doors off and just very gently just pry them out. They just pop out eventually. There we go. Um, and I also took the bottom shelf out so that I would have a tall enough space for things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and st start by leaving this top door in but to take the doors off, you have to open the one above it. So and there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take those out. Then I got some bins at Lowe's today um, so, that, so that I don't have to fish around on racks so that I can just pull it out. So let's, let's grab those. All right, so here's what I got. I got the inner design drawer organizers um, and so those are just gonna go like so. They didn't have a lot of choices and I thought this was good enough. Um, there will be a little bit of wasted space. This It might not work quite so well on this bottom one, but hopefully it works well on the others. So we've got that. And I'll take the tags off later. But that'll help me put stuff in here and then I can just, I can get all the way to the back. So just an organizational tip, it's just really nice. I hope you found this video helpful. I have to admit this was one of my most painful videos to to make because I really do love the isotherm drawer fridge and I'm so disappointed that it doesn't keep my food cold enough. When a mistake is that expensive, it's hard to admit that you've made it. If you have an inox drawer 130, drop a comment and let us know if you've had this problem as well. And if you have, if what solutions that you've come up with. I'm gonna probably do an update video on how the freezer is working out as a fridge in a little bit. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. I also have a Facebook group for the community called Gal Adventures, and there's a link down in the description below. I'd love to have you join us and engage in conversation there. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.